If the equestrian aesthetic is something that you really like, then this video is for you. The equestrian was put out in collaboration with the virtual doll convention Club Gray subscription. This is the second video of two for this particular design. The first video shows you how to make those slim fitting breeches with inner thigh grip. If you're interested in seeing that video, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Inspired by the Western theme that Rachel shared with me, I thought I'd take London Society Grace and give it a little twist. Today's sewing tutorial will walk you through the steps to construct the equestrian coat. Let's go ahead and get started. The pattern pieces included in the equestrian jacket are shown here. I like the versatility of the jacket because you can make it in a two-tone or you can actually just use a one-tone color, use a tweed, a light wool, or whatever your desire is. The pattern pieces include the jacket front, this is the front facing, the jacket front lining, the jacket side back, the back, the sleeve, and then the contrasting collar and pockets that I will be displaying in this pattern. And I'm going to be using a lightweight gray wool as well as the accent pieces in a black wool. I've already cut the pattern pieces out, so the first thing that we're going to do to get the construction started is to sew the front dart in the jacket front. We'll take the front pieces over to the ironing board and give it a press. Next, we'll sew the side back sections to the back of the jacket. Before I took the pattern pieces off, I actually took some small clips in towards the curved edge of both of these pieces. Now I'm going to place them right sides together and get those seams sewn. We'll take that over to the ironing board and press those seams open. With the seams pressed open, we'll grab our jacket front sections and pin it right sides together to the jacket back and sew the shoulder seams. With our shoulder seams pressed open, we're gonna set the jacket to the side for a minute and turn our attention to the sleeves. There's two steps that we wanna do for the sleeves at this point. One is to turn the hem edge under one quarter inch and give it a press. And the second is to run a gathering stitch between the dots as indicated on the pattern. Pulling the gathers gently will give you an opportunity to create an ease as you place the sleeves into the armhole openings. Remember when you're pulling that gathering stitch, you're not trying to create any actual gathers, but just a rounding at the top of the sleeve cap to make it easier to install into the armhole opening. Once you have that done, you're gonna pin the sleeves right sides together to the jacket and get them installed over at the sewing machine.
Once you look at your sleeve installation, you'll see that there are no gathers, but everything looks to be pretty good. So you want to check both sides, and if everything is as you think, you're going to clip in towards that seam allowance and trim it down a little bit. And then we're going to sew the jacket front sections to the back at the side seam. Make sure to check both sides of the garments before you clip in towards that seam allowance. If everything looks to be good, we'll take a few clips in and then we'll press it right at the side seams and turn the jacket right side out. With our jacket seams pressed and also the jacket turned right side out, you can really see how it's coming together. The next step is to prepare the upper collar. And all we're gonna do is take that pattern piece, fold it in half with right sides together and sew along both short ends. We're gonna trim the seam allowance on both sides and then we're gonna turn the collar right side out and give it a press. To get the collar basted to the jacket, we're going to find the center of the collar and match it to the center of the jacket and pin it with right sides together. When you have the collar pinned in place, you do want to confirm that you have an equal distance of coat left past the collar on both finished edge. If you're satisfied with the placement, then you'll take it over to the sewing machine and baste it in place. With the collar basted in position, we're gonna check both sides to make sure everything looks good. And then we're just gonna set it to the side for a minute and get the pocket sewn to the pocket lining. Once you have the pocket turned in press, you can take it back over to the sewing machine and run a zigzag stitch or even just a straight stitch across the top to hold the lining and the exterior portion of the pocket together. Then we're gonna set it to the side and finish the construction of the jacket. At this stage in construction of the jacket, we're gonna need to complete the lining, which I did off camera and I have it presented right here. We constructed the lining in the exact same steps that we used to construct the jacket with the exception of the collar and the front facing. So you'll notice that the front piece for the lining is cut into actually two pieces. This is cut out of the lining material and this is cut out of the exterior portion of the material so that when we turn that uh, lower collar piece back, you can't see the lining. So with the lining constructed, we're gonna place it right sides together to the jacket with the collar tucked in. With everything pinned together, we're gonna to start at the center back of the jacket. So all the way around, around the neck hole edge, down the other side, and come almost to where we started, but leaving an opening to turn the jacket right side out.
Once you've made it all around the exterior portion of the jacket, you do want to carefully check both sides so that you can visually pick up any problems if you created any gathers or any puckers that weren't intended. So it looks to be pretty good on that side. The next thing you can do is with your fingers, you can kind of feel the ends to see if the uh, lapel went past the collar in an equal distance to that seam. And I'd have to say that it feels pretty good, so I'm hopeful about that. And then on the back seam, we did reinforce before the opening to make sure that when we turn the jacket, we don't start to pull that seam out. So everything seems to be really good. We're gonna clip in towards the seam allowance, turn the jacket right side out and give it a press and see how that actually went. With the jacket turned in press, it appears that everything's coming together really well. We're going to grab our needle and thread and do a few hand finishing stitches before we move on to the next step. We're going to close the opening where we turned the jacket at the back, as well as attach the sleeve lining to the sleeves. I've removed Grace's wig so we can get a better look at how the jacket is coming together and I really, really like it. It's closing well in the front, the uh, hemline is matching up, I like the sleeve length. When I turn it over to the back, I think everything looks pretty good as well. With the coat fitted to the doll, I'm going to mark the placement for those snaps, I'm going to add some decorative buttons, and I'm going to actually attach the pockets. A hint to improve the final look of the jacket is also to tack the collar pieces down right where you want them to be positioned. Based on the weight of the fabric that you use, you may find that the jacket looks like the collar is sticking straight out. So with just a little tacking, you can get it positioned exactly where you want, creating the exact aesthetic that you want. With our buttons and snaps applied, the last step is to add a few tacks to the collar to keep it laying right where we want it and get those final photographs. As you can see from our final photographs, Grace really does channel a beautiful equestrian aesthetic. The equestrian coat can easily be adapted to other fashions by simply changing the color, the fabric choice, or what you choose to pair the coat with. I did want to share with you guys when I came up with this original idea, I was obsessed with finding the perfect accessories to go along with the equestrian look. Grace borrowed her beautiful velvet helmet as well as the riding crop from the Jackie Kennedy Franklin Mint doll. Thank you guys so much for coming along with me today. I hope you enjoy the construction of the equestrian coat. If you have any questions, please list them in the comment section below. As always, I thank you for your time and for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.